Folks, you're all very welcome back to the talk from the terrace, and I'm delighted again to be joined by Alternative View editor Matt McGlone to talk all things Celtic as we head into pre season after having a couple of weeks away from, I suppose, moaning and giving out about last season. So, uh, without further ado, Matt, welcome to the show. How have you been keeping? I've been keeping pretty good, yeah. Keeping pretty good. The weather over here's been great, and uh, been getting outdoors a lot and uh, doing lots of walking. Keep the mind and the body going. So that's I think we should all be trying to do that just now. Although we're sort of coming out of lockdown now, and we're getting a lot more freedom. Does this feel a bit strange that we've, we've all of a sudden been sprung in back in loose into society again? Um, so that takes a wee bit getting used to. Well, I have to say, uh, you, you've got a good few weeks on us over now because the Bear Gardens opened about three weeks ago here, but I'm enjoying now getting me on back because I was getting a bit fed up looking at you on Twitter there, you and young Declan now drinking pints. But I have to say, it's it's done you good, Matt. You're looking very well, and I'm I'm loving the, the green and white Adidas top, and uh, I have to say, you have a nice little setting behind you there with all the Celtic books. I have to say, I've got, there's about four shelves of Celtic books there. Um, I had them in boxes and cupboards and under the beds. I decided to, with the lockdown, try and get organised a wee bit and get things out and about. Um, but I've got a great selection of Celtic books and a great selection of books that people have actually gifted me, people have given me. I've got a bundle of books here. These are all from the sort of 60s. These are kind of older ones from the oh, 60s. Oh, very nice. Uh, we've got Ronnie Simpson... Um, Tommy Gable playing for Celtic number four, two, three, various ones. So, I don't, I don't hit that too much. I'll come flying down top of me. <laughs> uh, the props, the, the, you'll have to go into the prop department. Matt, um, have you before we get stuck into Celtic, um, have you been watching the Euros? Because I've been, I've been loving it. I think it's the best tournament I've seen in years. Aye, it's, uh, I kind of went off football that wasn't Celtic for a wee while because there was no crowd participation. I used to watch watch quite a lot of English football, you know, Celtic weren't playing. And the lack of crowds kind of put me off. But Euros has certainly definitely got me going again. Um, you you really do need crowd participation in football. People can say what they like, and I know that the Jockstein's saying, but... You know, the Euros has really livened the whole thing up for me. And now it's getting down to the sort of stage where you know, it's really, really good teams that are playing against each other. I just hope they don't turn into chess matches. Sometimes two really good teams try and outwit each other and don't take chances. They're very careful in the games. A no-no draw or a one each or whatever. But the 14 goals that we've seen the other night in the, the Portugal game and the, in the, the, the France game, uh, against Switzerland, I mean that really whetted the appetite. That was fantastic. Fourteen goals in, in one night. Oh, it, it was brilliant. But then we did have the game of chess between Belgium and Portugal. But I suppose you're going to get a few games at that. But it's just like it's just been. And as you say, the fans back in the stadium, you know, like some of the stadiums are actually full, which makes you know it. It, it really is an. Ex- it was, uh, which one was I watching? It was Denmark and. I uh, can't remember the one four one uh, was it Russia? Yeah, Denmark and Russia. That was a fantastic game. Um, I think I was played in Copenhagen, and the atmosphere, the place was bouncing. It looked like a full house to me. Yeah, it didn't look no, like there was it, any restrictions. It's been it's, it's been great to watch. And listen, talking about restrictions, how is? Uh, I know you're four ahead of us over there because we've just we were supposed to open up um, at the start of July indoor dining and the pubs, but. They've put it back now because of the fears of this new variant. How are we in Glasgow? Well, everywhere's open in Scotland. Um, you know, it used to be you had to book to get a table at an outside garden because they were limited because nobody could go inside. But now you can go inside and have a meal. And uh, you just have to wear a mask if you're walking around from the table to the toilet or from the entrance over to the table. Everything else is fine. Um, but I noticed today there was over another 4,500. Well, it was just these figures released today so that's I think that's the highest infection ever we've had here so I don't know how it's going to go now but hopefully with people being vaccinated it's uh, taking away the real danger of, of maybe having a serious illness or, or dying from it 
touch wood, I've been okay, and you know, I'm quite thankful of that because it's not something I'd want to get with my sort of current situation. So um, I've been double vaccinated, um, and uh, I think the vaccination is obviously helping keeping hospital rates down because I think that's a great fear from any government that hospitals are overcrowded, people are in corridors and trolleys. I mean, that's a nightmare scenario uh, for anybody. You know, maybe you can't even see your relative or your, or your friends at all. So hopefully the hospital <clears throat> um, admissions are low and uh, people are staying healthy with it. Yeah, Matt, hopefully they are because, um, you know, you mentioned there are pubs inside and geez, uh, it's going to be a great day when I can get back over and walk into McCool's, hear a few tunes or walk into the Brazen Head and see John behind the bar because... It just, it's a massive part of our, uh, I suppose, life over here because, we, you know, we... It's a massive part of the whole culture of going to Celtic games, as you know. Yeah. It's a day out and it's more than just, well, as you say, more than 90 minutes, as your magazine states. It's a lot more than that. Um, McCool's is a place that you and I go and uh, the, the back, both of our magazines, fanzines. And uh, I was actually in last week there, seeing Nicky. And, the wise uh, one. She's got it's his birthday, and he is one of the most remarkable men I've ever met. I've known him since 1993, and uh, when he had McCool's round in Candle Riggs, the first McCool's, and he'd also another McCool's in the West End called McCool's Way Out West, uh, in, in Partick in Glasgow, or Finiston rather. Um, so I was in seeing Nicky, and the pub was busy. I was really pleased to see that, because they've had a really, really rough time you know, but I believe the grants haven't been great for places which have music licenses. I'm not sure the ins and outs of it, but I don't think um, don't think they were given as much government help as, uh, as some normal pubs who don't have music. So uh, yeah, McCool's great, uh, great atmosphere and a uh, great vibe, music and football, but more. And it was it was Nicky who brought the Pogs to Glasgow. First time the Pogs came to Glasgow and a, a great story. I've been I've been trying to get him onto the podcast, but I think he's just a little bit unsure of the old technology and if he only knew how simple it was. But hopefully we can get into the pub and, and, and have a proper chat with him. Because like as I said there, we know we're missing the pubs and while I was off there for we we took a break here for about for three weeks. It was meant to be for two weeks, but there was nothing happening uh, at Celtic. So we said, right, we'll take another week. And I headed off around the country and it was down at Kilkenny with the Wolf Tom Celtic Supporters Club, down in Cork with the Pat Glavin Supporters Club and over in, in Waterford with the, the Port Lag and everyone I spoke to, they like everyone has renewed their season books. Yes, there was a few sleepless nights, you know, what, what you know, what they would would or wouldn't. But then like they just cannot wait to get back. They're not even they're not even talking about Celtic Park. They just the first step is to get to an airport or a ferry terminal and just get across to Glasgow. You know, it's just been it's been it's been surreal having to watch last season from, you know, a laptop or a, a TV and and I, I couldn't like everybody I spoke to was the same. Just get us back. And they're all very excited about the new manager. Um not so excited that, you know, how how slow it took to get him in and that, but the feedback has been very positive. And okay, you can initially, Matt, we jumped on Wikipedia and stuff like that to see who he was. But I done a bit of research. We got a Japanese journalist on. He gave us the story of you know his time in Japan, and just on uh, the recent this week's Celtic Soul, but oh, sorry, last week's Celtic Soul podcast, um, I spoke to Johnny Gould. He's over in New Zealand now, and he was a coach uh, trying to set a team up against Ange. And he said, you know, he's done an Invincible in Australia. He says, you'd hate going to play him because they were just his teams are just such good teams. And he says, I always come off second best against them. So there is positive vibes. You know, the goldfish bowl at Glasgow may pose other problems, but he doesn't seem he doesn't seem a man that would take much shit and doesn't seem phased by the whole job because it is a massive job now to rebuild. Yeah. Uh I watched his press conference. I thought he was great. Um, I think you can tell a lot about a, per a person's character, about the way they answer questions, and you know the usual tricky questions were thrown at him, and he answered them very, very well. I don't think he'll take any messing around. I don't think anybody's going to turn up unfit this year and expect to still be in the building. 
Um, I haven't heard a negative word about him. I've done a bit of background like yourself on him. And, uh, you know, to have won in Japan and to have won in Australia, championships, both places, and to have managed the national team, I mean, you don't get that by being a bad manager. Um, so for me, 100% behind him. Always will be with any Celtic appointment because, you know, we have to go along with it. Um, but for me, you know, I'm encouraged by him and I, I think he'll do well for us. Um, as long as the PLC back him up, give him the tools for the job. You know, there's signing yesterday, Bear Hoggerhide, I think I've said that right. I'm glad you said it, not me, ma. I've got it written down about a paper right in front of me. <laughs> I love your research. <laughs> My head, <did> <laughs> um, so he looks a, a big boy. He, he, look, he looks like a big, sturdy player. Somebody would take any messing around. And, you know, um, we've also got Liam Shaw, who's came in. Don't know much about the lad. But I, I think we're going to see signings coming in pretty rapid. We have to. I mean, there's no choice. We have to see signings coming in rapid now. Is it what, 17 days or less than three weeks for the first Champions League qualifier? So, you know, we have to, we have to be ready for that. But yeah, everything has been slow, but here we are. I mean, no point in looking back. Um, we've renewed our season tickets. All my family have. And, um, we're all looking forward to it. And Dominic McKay said the other day there that it's been a record amount of season tickets. Um, so, well, when I say a record amount, um, it's more than Rangers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the, the the season book. He seems very happy with the season book uh, renewals when he done the the fan media press conference. He seemed, he said he got the figures and he was very happy. And uh, I'm seeing on on our on our club WhatsApp group, uh, everyone has renewed an air club, which is I think it's 120, which is quite a lot. You know, you normally get a few falling, you normally get a few falling away, ma. You know, um, well, that, that's fantastic commitment. Consider where you guys are located. Uh, and considering there's, you know, there's so many other things in life that people have to spend money on, and it hasn't been, it hasn't been a great season at all last year. But again, great commitment from you guys over there, fantastic. I mean, I hope, I hope Celtic just don't take the kind of support from far away for granted, because um, you know, you guys have really showed up. Yeah, Matt, and and just before we, I'm going to go back years now because just just after reminding me of something, Mark Borg sent me on the audio from the Sales for Change meeting in Dundalk when when all the, the Irish clubs backed the Sales for Change that time. And um, he also sent me on the audio from an interview he'd done at the time with a Dublin radio station. So I'm try- going to try and get them cleaned up and maybe get them out in some kind of um, format. It do- it'll take a bit of work because they, they are old and the, you know, the, fo- the files are, aren't great. Uh, I've seen one on a podcast um, a year or so ago uh, from the Dundalk one. Um, I've, I've heard that it was an audio and uh, it certainly takes you back. I mean, the, those were the days. I mean, I think back now and I say to myself, you know, 26 years ago, where did you get the energy, the drive and the, the thought in the first place to sort of do something like this? And uh, it, it never leaves you. It, it's never, it's been part of my life since, you know, and you know, it's, there's the aspects of it which, you know, really intrude into your personal life, which haven't been great for me. But overall, you know, we did what was right at the right time. And uh, Celtic were going down. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I know a lot of people said at the time, oh, too big a club to go down. Well, we, we saw what happened across the road. And, uh, yeah, uh, Dundalk, I recall, I think it was um, 62 from memory, 62 Irish supporters clubs were uh, represented there and we got the vote from 61 out of 62 uh, and the only reason we didn't get the other ones because the delegate that was at Dundalk for his club had to go back and speak to his members and we got it the next day so we got 100% support from the whole of Ireland which I've got to say um, was better than we got from the whole of Scotland as far as supporters clubs are concerned I'm not going to get into the politics of that just now but the, the Irish Celtic sports clubs are pa- backed as 100%. Yeah. And uh, certain Celtic sports clubs over here didn't. And back then, um, our club wasn't even born. We were, a lot of the lads were travelling with Nave Park. Some of them were members. Hilly was the, I think his title was the Loud Mead rep. And then uh, when we broke away, because 
we just got Mark just said look lads is it getting too big because I think there was two bus loads of us there was a hundred of us to an Aberdeen game so we, we set off on a little journey with three season books and a loan of 200 quid and after the season we've had it's it's great to, to commit you to the club and you know it's called St Margaret's because at the time we were setting it up Hilly's sister passed away with cancer and you know there's so much in, involved in that club and there's you know there's a family connection and then the connection with Selig and that, but I'm, I'm going off the, I'm going off the beaten track, but just for the club again to deliver 120 season ticket holders, when it's based in a, in a small village in County Mead, you know, I know th- there's many of us not from there, but it is, as, as I see the local club, and just, it, like, it's just great because it would have been, you know, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if some people said, look, I'm, I'm not going to renew this year because I'm disappointed what happened last season. But again, then, you know, you're, you know, if you lose 40 season book holders, because I did expect about 40 to go and about 80 to stay. If you lose 40 season book holders, like, you know, you'll be a long time building that back up. And um, it does put you in a good good state going forward now. And, you know, you spoke about Ange there at the press conference, Matt. One thing I was impressed with when he was asked, you know, he, I knew the question was going to come up, that, you know, he wasn't fourth choice. And he said, I don't care if I'm fourth or fifth choice. When Celtic come in for me, I was taking the job and I just loved it because it was two fingers up to everybody, you know. That was a great answer. That was a really good answer because that's an answer you give that there's no comeback to. Because the guy's basically saying, I don't care, I'm here, I'm the manager. And uh, if you're trying to make a wee point here, you know, that wasn't first choice, then, you know, your point has just evaporated because, I think he said, if he'd been fifth choice, he didn't even know if he was fifth choice. So, um, no, so that was great. Again, it shows a bit of the guy's character. No messing about, straight in. And, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think there are going to be some interesting press conferences coming up <laughs> from now to next year. Yeah, and, and Don McKay, or Dominic McKay, um, he seemed very polished, Matt. He, he, you know, his background in PR, very political, I thought, with his answers. Um, knew, how to, knew how to walk the room, knew how to answer, but not answer. But it's you know it's it's too early to to you know to draw any comparisons with with the previous um, CEO. But like, hopefully he can bring some ideas from you know rugby because he's like he done an amazing job with rugby because you know r- rugby really grew over the last couple of years in Glasgow because it's massive over here. But I could see it, I could see it when we were going over there, and it's good to kind of have. It's good to have a fresh pair of hands and a fresh mind in the boardroom because that boardroom is so stale. And I think, I think we all saw that when you know every time Ian Banky or speaks, which is rare, but you do go, you know, like back to the bank and uh, you know the finance because he's definitely he's definitely not a football man. Well, I heard Ian Banky speak last week at the press conference, and I say, you know, don't know the guy. Um, it, 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 he doesn't fill me with encouragement when I hear him speaking. Maybe that's just the way he speaks, and that's fine. But, uh, yeah, Don Mackay um, spoke very strongly, very <clears throat> encouraging about Celtic in the season ahead and uh, the aims of where we're going. And The way I see the job of a, a chief executive guy is that he works for the club. The PLC tell him what the budget is. He tells the manager what the budget is, and they either decide that that budget gets extended by selling some players and adding to the budget from the sales of the player going out um, or working within the budget that they've got. Um, now, any manager worth his, worth his salt must know the budget before he walks in. He must have a rough idea. He, he can't walk into Celtic and be told your budget for the year to sign players is £5 million because that's no good. So he has to be given a rough ballpark figure. Of course, that budget goes up and down depending on uh, the players that go out. So we've, we've already... You know, brought in money from last season, uh, and you know, there's players' contracts who probably won't be who haven't been renewed this year, and loans that haven't been renewed. And uh, Lee Griffiths has been given yet one other opportunity, which I'd suggest is his last opportunity because last season we needed uh, Lee to, to step up to the plate. And uh, just going by what his former boss said, you know, um, Lee didn't, didn't, wasn't any good to us, so you know. We have to take the personalities and the sentiment away. 
and sort of say, what are you doing for us on the park? Because at the end of the season, if somebody else is running about your trophy, it's because we haven't done well enough. And that's the only thing I look at in football. What are you doing in this jersey, on the park? Are you fit? Are you good enough? Yeah, man. And like, I look at Lee and it, it kind of, he divides even my own mind, never mind other supporters, because I look at him, right? And yes, there's, you know, there's reports that he came back unfit last season, but this is a new season. John Hatton, I've seen him on Twitter now, and John knows the thing about scoring goals for Celtic, and he reckons he's a 25 goal man next season. I I really hope so, because he does always. And, you know, he is a player that, you know, in previous seasons has, has got us off our sea. You know, he scored some great goals. He's, uh, you know, when he's on form, he's, he, he's brilliant. He had a brilliant partnership with Eddie for a couple of months before the pandemic. And, um, but I'm also, you know, I'm also glad he's staying because he's the type of player that if he moved to another team in, in the SPL, he could, he could he could do damage to us because, you know, he knows our defenders and he's playing against them in training and he, he is that type of player and he he might he could have come back to haunt us, you know. I, I, I'm glad he's signed um, because I think on his game, he's a great player. I think he's a very good player. He's a guy that gets strong defences. It's not a big sort of stiff centre forward that's got to, you know, just be here or there. Lee can run from wide positions, run from midfield. He'll, he'll, he'll get range uh, I'm glad he's signed and I hope that he's taken the opportunity to say, well, what another chance I've got here, you know, to make it with Celtic. Because on his game, he is a great asset to the club. And I, I can't see any reason why he's not really going to buckle down and focus here. Um, the, the club have shown fantastic faith in him and he's got to show that back. We need a fit league Griffiths on the park and what an asset he is to Celtic. Yeah, and the manager must have, um, he must be in his plans then because, you know, we've heard about this attack-attack um, style of play and when Johnny Gould was chatting to me, Matt, if, you, if it's, it's a really good interview, if you, if you give a listen to the podcast, he, um, he said, you know, he's, the new manager and is very much, you know, like a Brendan Rodgers style manager, and that that will excite the fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think uh, they always say, you know, a new broom brings great freshness, and uh, he's he's come in there with a clean slate. As I said at the start, all we need, as far as I'm concerned, with this new manager, is that the board back him with the, the player positions that need filled, and that, after that, then I think you know. We have faith in him. We don't know much about him. Read up about him. He's got a good CV. Uh, and I think this, I'm, I'm feeling I've got renewed confidence for the season ahead. Um, you know, like everybody else, I had lots of doubt. You know, at the end of last season, the direction the club was going and the ridiculous 10 or 12 weeks wait for Eddie Howe was just nonsense. But now we've sort of settled down and we're putting players into position. Yes, it's all a bit late, but we have to look forward. Um, and I'm looking forward to new signings imminently, hopefully in the next days or weeks. Yeah, Matt, you're much happier than you were the last time you in the podcast because that was a very frustrated and angry Matt McGlone. But we are a pos- we are more positive now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you have to when you speak. You have to speak of how you feel at the time. You know, and at the time that was the mood at the time, and that's how we felt. And you have to reflect that when you speak. And I'm always trying to be on the... I always try and look for the positive of, of a situation. Uh, and I'm trying to look for the positive here. And, and I'm feeling quite positive, I've got to say. I, I don't think it's a ball's done. You know, I think that um, we are beginning to put building blocks in place here. It's slow, definitely slow. And, you know, obviously people are impatient. I get that. But, you know, I, I genuinely think that we're going to be getting things done in the next couple of weeks. And, yeah, I'm more positive. Yeah, because, like, we have a huge task coming up. Pre-season kicks off now on Wednesday against Sheffield Wednesday. But, you know, the big one coming up is FC Midland. And I probably didn't pronounce that correctly either. But, like, that's going to be a massive task, Matt, because the players aren't in place yet. Um, So we may need to be patient this season you know, early in the season. Well, I remember speaking to Ronnie Delia once about um, his theory in football and he was always a team builder. 
And I said to him, well, how, how do you find that, that you come into Celtic, you have to have success right away? He said, well, it's a new pressure. He said, it's a new pressure for me. I'm not used to it. And, uh, but I understand the demands of the fans and understand the demands of this club. So he got it pretty quickly. And I would imagine that, you know, Ange, at quite a lot of other clubs, um, would be given time. But there is no time here, as you know. There is no time. We want instant success. I always think when somebody's come in and if it doesn't work out right away, if we, if we look closely at the reasons why it didn't work out, we can show a bit of patience there. You know, if we demand, demand, demand and have to make it happen like magic, it's not going to happen that way. But hopefully, with all the building blocks in place and the right manager, the right attitude and the renewed enthusiasm from the players who are already there and the new ones coming in, hopefully that will all be a big positive. Yeah, yeah, Matt. Matt, thanks very much for joining me today. Um, it was just kind of to catch up and get your take on Ange and, and the pre-season coming up. There's going to be a lot more to talk about during the season and hopefully you can join us on a regular basis to give us your opinion. Absolutely. I love coming on your programme. I listen to it quite a lot. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm here anytime you want. So folks, just uh, once again, thanks to Matt. And listen, if you hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel, we'll also have this out on audio as well if you prefer to go for a stroll or listen to the podcast in your car while you're driving to or from work if you're going back to work. But folks, uh, thanks very much for listening and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.